Hello and welcome again to our Binocular Insights and Telescope Insights series here at Southwest Optics. And today we're continuing with a further insight into our special skills you can develop for your digiscoping pleasure. I'm here with my good friend Rob from COA, I'm Russell from Southwest Optics. And uh, today we're looking at, at being able to get the most out of your existing DSLR in conjunction with your COA spotting scope and just the kind of results that you can get and obtain from using them together and how really they pip some of the high-end, very expensive lenses that you may otherwise have to buy specifically from uh, just for your camera. Rob, tell us more about how the system works. Yeah, so it's, it, it's actually very simple and the, the, th the, the thought behind it is you're out with a spotting scope, yeah. you want to take photos, it's carrying a spotting scope and a huge conventional telephoto lens not easy so why not connect your camera body to the scope if you're into photography if you know your way around your DSLR you probably want all those creative features that you're used to working with rather than going down the smartphone route which is very very popular these days but for the photo purist the DSLR option is still there and with COA it's very very simple yeah because you might want to shoot with aperture priority functions you might want to do a long exposure you might want to alter the aperture itself um, yeah. You might want to use focus peaking, might you? Exactly. So the full frame cameras or the APS-C cameras, the Micro Four Thirds, they all got these uh, huge amounts of creative tools built in. Yeah. And if that's what you're familiar with and that's what you like to do, then digiscoping the DSLR is, is a great option. You've got to remember a few things. There are some limitations. You, you, when you talk about conventional uh, telephoto photography, you might have a 500mm f4 lens, which you, when you look at the objective lens on that, it's enormous. It's gathering as much light as possible to give you that fast aperture yeah. for the faster shutter speeds. So it's like this perhaps, isn't it? Rather yes. than this kind of size. Yeah. Much more bulky, probably yeah. about this kind of length. Yeah, like as um, long as your arm. Yeah, so obviously, you know, that is an amazing piece of equipment. You've got all your autofocus features. You've got, you can track birds in flight, that kind of thing. But if you want to just have that, the comfort of carrying your spotting scope, connecting your camera to take really good quality pictures, and this is a great option. In terms of um, spotting scopes, for DSLR, this method, the bigger the objective lens, the better. You, you need as much light as possible yeah. coming through the system to hit the sensor. So wouldn't really recommend it for very compact scopes. It does work, but it's all about shutter speed. With this setup now, where this is a full frame camera, minimum 25 times optical zoom, that's the equivalent to a thousand millimeter lens. Wow. I mean, and that's huge, but what you do take a hit on is the aperture. So the aperture using this system with our PA7A, this scope, is, you know, it's, it's a relatively small objective lens when you talk about telephoto photography. You're talking of an aperture of around 12.4, so you can see why a full frame camera with good ISO yeah. uh, controlling the noise is important because- That's F12.4, isn't F12 it? F12.4. Yeah, yeah. So if you're shooting at a thousand millimeter, you need at least a thousandth of a shutter, second yeah. of a shutter speed. Of course. Mo motion blur is the biggest problem with digiscoping. Because, you know, very often people say, I can't get a, uh, a sharp image, it's blurred. Well, check your, check your settings, you need a fast shutter speed, and usually that solves the problem. Mm -hmm. So, um, very easy to connect. We have a PA7A adapter. It has protection glass here, so to protect the, the sensor, because you go in body only. There's, you've got the spotting scope, you've got the camera, there's no electronics. It's a very much a manual process, which I personally gives me more satisfaction. When I've taken an image digiscope, I'm, if, it, if it's a really good image, I'm very proud of it, because it's taken some skill to do. Yeah, and you've got complete control of the whole output. Exactly. So tell me a bit more about the control of the image then, Rob. So, because there's no electronics, the, the best method I can suggest is to put the camera into aperture priority. Yes. So that in effect means you've got an aperture of, of naught, that doesn't exist. You've got the native aperture of the spotting scope talking to the camera, which is F12. So you have to control the shutter speed with the ISO on the camera. Yeah. So increase the ISO to get a faster shutter speed. If you want to adjust the exposure, use exposure compensation up and down. And you're so, only looking in the ISO maybe a few stops worth, aren't you? Exactly. I mean, you know, th these these full frame cameras these days, the control of noise is just incredible. So, you know, I'm I'm constantly pushing the ISO up to well over a thousand. Oh, no, yeah. no problems whatsoever. So 
just remember those few simple rules. Put it, put it into um, aperture priority. Your in camera's at about f12. Yeah, so even, even though there'll be no communication, that's roughly what you're working with. Use the ISO to Great control tip. the shutter speed. Um, okay, and then in terms of um, connecting the camera, we have the PA7A. We have an inner collar here which attaches this adapter to the scope. So first thing first, take the eyepiece out. And then we've talked about in the past about the cover system. Yeah. This is the accessory collar which allows you to attach various so we've adapters. Already removed that. Yeah. Yep. Just counterclockwise turn that off. Put and on the new collar. I put this collar on. And this PA7 collar could actually just live on the scope, couldn't it? You can just leave it on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it doesn't affect the use of the scope. So if you if you did your scoping regularly, why not just leave it on? So the eyepiece goes back in, and okay. then there's the adapter. Now it, right. it's it's for DSLRs. Uh, full frame, APS-C, Micro Four Thirds, it, it will work with any kind of mirror system, no vignetting. All you need is the adapter and then you have a T2 ring for the camera. For the camera. So we, we have a standard 42mm T2 thread here. T so this is an SE mount because I'm going to do it on a Sony. On a Sony. Yeah. I put the T2 adapter on. So that's your camera end. That's yeah. the scoop end. Put it on. Like so. And of course the PA has got the aperture cut out here, so you've got perfect access for yep, so focusing you, you, and choosing, sorry, for choosing your magnification exactly. that you, you desire so, on the scope still. So there you go. If, if, if the eyepiece is at 25 times, I've got a, a, Oops, a thousand mil telephoto lens in effect. There. Yeah. If I crank that zoom up to 60 on full frame, that's 2,450 millimeter equivalent. Now obviously you're getting into, you know, lights and physics and that kind of thing. So you've got to have some expectations. You need good light. And I wouldn't suggest pushing it right up to 60 times. No. I would, I would keep, keep it as bright as possible. I mean, a thousand mil is, is, a, is a, a big telephoto power. You, bearing in mind, if you put a APS-C, you have to multiply that by typically 1.6. Yeah, different crop factor. Yeah, so minimum 1600 mil up to 3920 millimeter if you're at full 60 times. <laughs> put a micro four thirds on there and you're into minimum 2000 millimeter. So you, you really have to control that. You need a very stable tripod. You've got to have these fast shutter speeds. But you'll be very, very surprised at what you can achieve yeah. with this very simple setup. And the cinematic quality is just truly Im oh, impressive yeah. because the compression at those magnification is just superb. Yeah, you get that lovely bokeh effect and the, the, the subject really just... Yeah, the separation yeah. is even just uh, at great distance is really staggering. Yeah. And you can use, you know, like we mentioned, the, the, the focus peaking, the built-in features of these mirrorless systems is a really nice visual aid to help you you'd really know when, when something's in focus because yeah. you've got to remember it's all manual. And with this coloscopes, with this dual focusing system, this pinpoint control, you'll really see that come into effect. Yeah, I noticed in um, preparation, you can just dial out that red on your focus peak until it's non-existent. It's just so meticulously fine and fine-tuned. Uh, it just gives you the confidence. And then of course you can, if you want to use a loop as well. Exactly. It's worth mentioning the fluorite crystal as well on, on these scopes. When uh, you look through a high-end spotting scopes, the, the performance is very, very good. Um, we talk about chromatic aberration, color fringing. When you put a DSLR camera body, if, if, there's, a, if there's a weakness in the scope, you'll see it in the image. So the fluorite crystal, which is combating chromatic aberration, really does come into play with digiscoping. Yeah, and just for any of your viewers interested, fluorite basically is the world's most light transmissive material. So this front element uh, behind the front piece of glass is 100% fluorite, and that's cultured in-house and cut to shape and finished by hand at the Coa factory. Yeah, so that really does have an impact on, on especially if you know, you're doing some high contrast subjects. So, yeah. Uh, just and the colour transmission across the whole colour frequency range from the blues, which typically lack a lot, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But they're just on par at high levels with all the other colour frequency spectrum colours. So blues, yellow screens, reds, across the whole spectrum, you get a very flat response. So it reproduces natural shots just beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rob, thanks so much for showing us just the practicality of using this system and simplifying it for us. So just to recap, simply, all you really need is this connector, which is the PA7A, PA yeah. PA yeah. and whatever adapter you need for your DSLR. That's it. 
Great, thanks again, Rob. And thanks very much for watching.